Okay. <clears throat> I have a question as a direct message. Hi, Andreas. What do you say about self can't get out of self and the spiritual connection? Well, well, to me, that's just the same thing. The self and spirituality are the same thing. Or one could say the other way around. Spirituality is just the person seeking for something deeper. It doesn't have to be in the spiritual world, so to speak. Even when the person looks for a new car or wants a bigger house, it's actually on a spiritual or personal mission, seeking for something deeper. And that's automatic. That's just what the self consists of. Um, uh, that's why also the self can't escape itself, because it is that. You would need another self <laughs> that's possible to escape from the self. So that's just, yeah. That's why, if at all, uh, liberation could be described as the collapse of that. It has nothing to do with the self becoming something or becoming aware of something. It's just the collapse of that apparent illusion that there is such a thing as the self. And automatically when the self collapses or this illusion of there being a self, the search ends, the spiritual path ends or the personal path ends. It's nothing achieved in that, of course. Mm. So as long as there is this illusion, there'll be seeking in the personal world or in the illusion of a personal world and the subject object reality and the hope that an object called fulfillment can be found or attained. So we cannot um, experience the the unpersonal, you could say. Yeah, yes. And but what is it then when life feels unpersonal? Well, in a way, how you put that? I mean, maybe that's just a, a matter of words, but to me, that's the contradiction in itself feels impersonal you know if that's the experience so to speak yeah. it must be personal because then life seems to be in a certain way that someone is aware of so when it feels impersonal yeah it's it is a, a paradox in a way you know it's it's just the words i don't know how to express it but I would say... Because, to be, uh, let's put it like this, to me, it doesn't feel impersonal. I know, but for me, it's like sometimes it seems to feel personal, and then there's another time where it is, I would say, it feels unpersonal, but it's basically not the right words. It's just... That's it's just I mean. floating, or it's just nothing. It's, you know, there's... that doesn't seem to be any problem with anything. Yeah, but I mean, either there is no one there or mm. it's just times when you are less involved or when there are less problems. But this yeah. would be as personal as when there is trouble. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just no big problem going on at times. Yeah, yeah. But now I feel like, yeah, it's actually afterwards there is the I, you could say, mm. who reflects and sees it as it. In the moment, yeah. there's basically nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the, there would yeah, be yeah, yeah. no one there. And so that's problems. it, yeah. But then, then it, it wouldn't, it also wouldn't feel impersonal then. There's just no one there. Then it would that's, just... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it, it would just be impersonal then, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always afterwards, because in the moment, there's nobody cares. So. Uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.
I mean, in a way, that's the only thing the person can do. It'll turn everything into a state, looking back on it. I mean, even about deep sleep, the person regards it as a state that's somehow part of its life. It doesn't really think about it, or it doesn't really comprehend how it was in deep sleep. But in the personal experience, it's so, it's so normal to regard this as a part of one's life and some kind of a state. I was deeply sleeping, and the person really thinks that it was sleeping, kind of. So yeah. Mm. But exactly, in terms of what we talk about here, this would be the contradiction in itself. Feel impersonal. Some people would also say, I see that there is no one, or I experience no one, and that that doesn't, that must be an experience, so to speak, that is personal. <clears throat> I'm often curious what people refer to <clears throat> when they refer to non-dual awareness or something. Then it turns out it's just an, a personal experience that they are referring to. <clears throat> Because the natural reality doesn't feel like anything. It's not a certain way to feel or experience the world. It's kind of everything and nothing. There is, the natural reality is no reality. Exactly. The absence of reality. Well, the absence of the illusion of reality. Yeah, okay. Mm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> one, one more step <laughs> well that would be the other thing it's also not a real absence of something yes of course yeah it makes total sense yeah yeah, yeah. the idea of reality is just invented within the unreality <laughs> so to speak exactly which again is the natural reality also but as what it is and not what it thinks about itself is as the illusion of reality and not about a real me it's not the natural reality being a real me it's the natural reality being the illusion of there being a me or something real And in that sense, this is the only message, well, you know, like this, which uh, says yes to, which says yes to everything. Yeah. It doesn't say, it doesn't say yes, of course. Yeah, no, I know. Mm. It's no denying. Yeah, exactly. It's never said to anything that, oh, you are not part of it. There's no energy of the denying, which is actually the individual energy. Yeah, one could say so, yeah. Taking it apart, deny this, accept that. Exactly. That's the natural reality, and this isn't. That's wholeness, but if you think too much, that isn't the natural reality anymore. Yeah. Being in a meeting, is it? Sitting on an airplane on the way to the meeting is not. Exactly. Or like what we talked about here, when I feel impersonal, that's it. And all the other ways that I can feel, that's not it. And in a way, it's all it, but never for anyone. And that's not trying to deny the me. It's just pointing out that it's wholeness as what it is, an illusion, or if at all. Yeah, this sort of, the word sort of wholeness got misconstrued along the way, you know, this past couple of decades that it's actually is something. 
Yeah, of course. Well, not just decades, centuries. <laughs> the absolute. It's the idea of the absolute. Yeah. That there is an absolute. That is. Yeah. It's interesting. Some people talk about the absolute. Well, it's the same as God. Yeah, I know. Just a bit less religious. Well, but some speakers do use that. Yeah. Well, I some I uh, the absolute you mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I know. But also something, you know, wholeness and all. Yeah, mm, yeah, it's a story. One that wholeness. Mm. And the message. I also hate that the message. Yeah. Some glorious holy thing. Oh, secret. Here's the message. I'll hand it off. Yeah. When you mess it. Yeah, it can easily become the same thing. Yeah. All right, I better yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> Before you go on too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who knows what the fuck is going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> what else is wrong? Hi, Andreas. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, when you had glimpses, were they uh, were they exactly like you see, or exactly like a snippet of what it's like now? No, no, no. They were all different. All glimpses, mm -hmm. all the glimpses that I had were very different. So they weren't a like a precursor to what you're, what it's like for no me. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Well, I guess I'm just kind of wondering what qualifies as a glimpse. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> well, the thing is, glimpses are as incomprehensible as everything else is. So, oh, <laughs> so there is no clear definition of a glimpse. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. One usually just can't deny that it was one, <laughs> or one just can't uh, claim that it, it was an experience. But there's nothing else that defines a glimpse. You said that it, it, that it can't claim that it was an experience, is it? Exactly, exactly. It's hard to claim afterwards that it was an experience, actually, or impossible. Uh -huh. So, but it's not the lack of experience that makes it a glimpse. Well, in a way, this would be the definition. If okay. you want one, that's what I would call a glimpse. But that's the thing. It, it, because it's not an experience, they are not the same. You know, it's not that a glimpse is always like this. Mm -hmm. Just as I said before, when there is no one, it's not that then life is in a certain way. Then it never is in a certain way. Okay. So you could say that the absence of experience would be a glimpse. Yes, so but th this would also be kind of a very simplified concept. But okay. Because experience is never really there. Experience is an illusion. So mm. that's in the story, of course. But, yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if it's, yeah, if, it, if it gives you a, an indication of what, of, of, you know, what no me is like. If you could, I guess there's, there's no me to say what no me is like, but exactly that's the funny thing with those glimpses. Um, 
And the thing is, if you ask people how they felt in the glimpse, how it was, how it actually was, you usually don't get much answers. Mm -hmm. Because there was no one in a glimpse and it can never really be said, oh, it was like this or it was like this or I felt like this. <clears throat> so that's why even if it would be an indication, uh, it would still remain incomprehensible how it actually was. So it's not an indication in that sense by nature or naturally. If I have one, I'll report it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you won't have it. But okay. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. And I think there are quite a few people here who, who do have glimpses, but they are not registered at all as such. Yeah, I was wondering about that. You you mentioned that before that they're not that they maybe they go unrealized or whatever. Mm. But you don't think a that like a, being drawn to this message, uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't mean that somebody's had a glimpse because they're that they're drawn to this message. It doesn't necessarily mean that. You know, it, it, I, I was thinking of the word rhymes that, you know, somehow this message rhymes with something in my life, for example. Yeah. That's that fact isn't necessarily doesn't mean that, you know, I've had a glimpse. I, if I've had one, I have you know, no recollection of it. So, I'm, yeah. So we don't. So we will never know how right. it exactly is. But in a way, there already is an. It doesn't for this. On the one hand, one could say, um, for an openness to this message, um, it doesn't need a glimpse. Right. Okay. On the other hand, one could say there had has uh, there had to be glimpses because there is an openness to this. There is a cracking open of the personal energy and some kind of openness to this. Okay. Either way, it doesn't matter. No. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's just funny how we talk about it like this. And I understand that's the impression. But the person will just regard it as something valuable and something that it owns or that has become part of its story and its path and it just isn't like that mm. of course in these contexts they, they are interesting and they seem to reveal something uh, kind of but it, it just not never to anyone and in that sense they don't have the value that the person is hoping they have Hi, Andreas. Hello. Hi. I don't know if this is like for all me's, but at least I know it of my own self. I'm always seeking order. And obviously, like OCD is a big thing about having order. But would you say there's already nothing out of place? Yes. Why not? Yeah, that's a good thing to say. Yeah. It's, oh, it's in the story. What do you refer it's to? It's in the story. Yeah. I like order too, actually. But as you, I guess... As you might see in the back. <laughs> yeah, very tidy. But the thing is, the seeking of order here is always to help me relax or to bring me to the... Do you know what I mean? When everything so feels okay for me. Hmm. But when you said there's already nothing out of place, but that's already in the story, you mean because there's not really anything actually going on at all? Yeah, one could say so, yeah. Mm. So to say there's nothing out of place, there would need to be a happening of events mm. in time. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you.
that's just now one there. No, there is his what happens. Incomprehensibly. What you're saying, or like, just to use the term, this message, it can't actually be denied, can it? Yes, it would need someone, yeah. Because Jim sometimes says the me never actually attacks the message. It misunderstands it and attacks its misunderstandings. Oh, totally. Of course. It so when you say... It attacks itself and Sorry. what it thinks how life is. Yeah, because when you say there is no one, there's only what's happening. Actually, you can't actually deny that. Do you know what I mean? You can deny what you think it means. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the struggle that the me has, so to speak, with life or with this message, which is the same thing, basically, all come out of its own ideas and hopes and dreams and beliefs and concepts. It's fighting to keep them up. But as I said, not just with this message or this message in that sense. It's a story, but, but this message represents how it perceives life. I mean, the person is in this constant struggle with its own beliefs. Oh, but I thought it is like this. But I thought I can become fulfilled. Oh, I thought this could never happen. I thought I can make this happen. I thought I have to bear it like a victim or whatever. I mean, that's all the me circling around itself only. Also, and sometimes people say when they meet this message or in a meeting, they have the feeling as if they hit a wall constantly or something. The wall is their own awareness. There is no wall here. What happens doesn't have a wall. It's not solid. It's not separate. It doesn't do anything in that sense. It's only the person um, reaching its own limits. It hits the wall itself created, the wall of experience, the wall of awareness. Okay, if there is no one is probably a phrase you use most often but hardly any questions are directly about this statement. Would you agree? It leaves no ground. Well, yeah, I guess there's <laughs> not much to say. If it is like that, I don't know, because of course there are questions very directly about that. Um, but yeah, it boils down to the whole dilemma of the person and it probably it feels so useless to ask this. Or oh, it's in the air that there is no question, uh, no answer to this question. But yeah, how do you mean there is no one? What does it mean? Yeah, it only means there is no one. Mm. 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 It's not much to talk about, I guess. Not enough to talk about for the person. <laughs> Very unsatisfying. Oh, yes. I mean, the sense of me goes together with the sense of dissatisfaction. And to hear that there is no one just confirms that dissatisfaction for the me. Mm. 
it just goes on being what it already is, apparently unsatisfied. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it's very annoying to not get an answer to one's own existence. Um, hi, Andreas. Hello. Um, I was just reminded about um, when uh, when you read a textbook on biology, and the, usually the chapter is called "What is Life." Mm. And the teacher writes up, ah, well, we can't define life, but we can say what the characteristics of all living beings are. Mm. Then they go into great detail about um, they breathe and they eat and they excrete and they do this and move and sense and so on. And that's something concrete that can be described. Mm -hmm. And then the original question is never referred to again. It's amazing, yeah. It's really <laughs> amazing. There's a huge difference between breathing and the sense to be alive. Yeah. Yeah, it's very funny. Yeah. So, um, the, although the they never really admit, although they say they they, oh, we can never really know what life is. They'll mm -hmm. never go back to that. Yeah. They'll never go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. And sort of say, so it remains unknowable. Yeah. Can't mm -hmm. be unknowable. It, it's yeah. not allowed to be. <laughs> so, in yeah. a way, it, it sort of reminded me that of um, what goes on in these meetings almost. It's, it is impossible to describe uh, whatever. But um, you can go around it and... and But the seek it's never heard, really. And mm. the seeking goes on and the need for explanations and mm. the mm. talking about it. And yes, absolutely. And, and the complications. And the complications. And of course, the idea that... Though, I mean, for the person, it's a theory that it's unknowable. It hears that, yeah. but it doesn't really believe it. No. It still focuses on, okay, but what can be explained? What we can know? Kind of knowing, yeah, actually, we can't know, all right, but <laughs> what about this, this, this? this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still left with those apparent explanations yeah which don't seem apparent to the person they seem real to the person uh -huh. yeah. hmm. it also reminded me of the one comment or question we had before it's basically the same thing um, about this this phrase there is no one and how hardly it's actually talked about that or how little questions actually come about that and most questions then go to some kind of a bit more you know story stuff because the, the actual point you just can't go there it reminded me of the example of the biology book like we're okay we can't explain what life is and then that's kind of off the table and then there's a, a whole long chapter about what actually can be said about life and stuff like that <laughs> yeah <clears throat> or at least they admit that they don't know hmm. Well, I guess even it's in the books, you are not allowed to write this as an answer in a test. 
<laughs> or should start every answer when they are okay what is the heart or what's the function of the heart maybe one should say actually we don't know really but i had to learn that it's <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> what do you think about the instant realization head popping one on one sessions some speakers offer? Well, uh, they have nothing to do with what we talk about here. <laughs> it's the glorification of realizations, it's the glorification of experiences of understanding and insights. And usually they go along with great enthusiasm. So I don't see a connection. Well, I don't know if we if we have the same the same people in mind, but I don't see any connection to this message. <clears throat> people celebrating their insights and the gorgeousness of understanding how there isn't anyone. So. I mean, I also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. <laughs> there just won't be any realizations. <laughs> mm, shouldn't have said that. Okay, so it's impossible to talk about anything. Whatever I say, it's a story without any connection with what's happening. Well, all, all talking is... Uh, exchanging stories or sharing stories and that's wholeness there's absolutely nothing wrong about that that's what we do uh, all the time during the day when we talk to someone that's what we're doing in these meetings and that is whole and complete the problem for the person is that in saying something it tries to speak the truth and lives in a world where it thinks that there is truth um that's the only dream so uh, there's never anything really true be spoken that's why nothing has to be said but this also doesn't imply that speaking should stop it's what seems to be happening quite naturally it's what we are doing here every time there is talking to each other or or not to each other, but they're speaking, talking, going on. And that's it. It just doesn't contain truth. But that's not a problem, because there just is no such thing. There is neither truth in speaking, nor in silence. Everything just is what seems to be happening, and is perfect as such. But... The moment you try to tell the truth, of course, that's in the dream. All right. So there is no one. All there is is what seems to be happening, and that's just itself. There is no there is no hidden layer of reality. Like truth, for example, that would be the idea of another deeper reality. 
this doesn't have a deeper truth or reality. It's totally fine to exactly be as it is with all its apparent aspects. There are no aspects with all that seems to be happening. It's an undivided and perfect impersonal appearance. That's everything. All right. Thanks a lot for joining. Oh, Thank you, Andreas. Lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Much love to everyone. Love to you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.